Yo, what is up guys? My name is AFC Yudinho and today we're finally uh, show the battle that you all have been waiting for. Many of you guys have been requesting me to upload this battle. It is the battle against Dawn in the semifinals and it was a very long battle but every turn did matter in this battle so I won't make this intro too long. Let's just hop right into the game. Let's go. Okay guys, we're uh, in the semifinals up against Don. Don is a really good player. I think he's probably one of the best players in this game. But yeah, like I said, we are gonna try to win this tournament, so we do have to beat Don. And I'm gonna put in my game phase again, and we're gonna go full tryhard mode. So looking at his team, I probably wanna lead off with Suicune, because it's really strong if he leads again uh, with Mamoswine, Tyranitar, or Garchomp. Which are often used as a lead. So let's see what happens. He does lead off with Tangrove. And this is actually not too bad because he might be fearing the substitute or Calm Mind. So I don't think he's going for knockoff or sleep powder. So I think bringing in my Zapdos is pretty safe. He's most likely gonna go for the Giga Drain. Because if I go for something like a substitute. Uh, on the sleep powder, it would be would be bad for him. If I go for Calm Mind on his on his uh, knockoff, it would also be bad for him. Yeah, he does go for the Giga Drain, and now I can get the poison off on him. He goes for sleep powder, but this is worth for me because getting this Tangrove poisoned is really nice, uh, helping me to take it down. And now I'm actually gonna stay in and I'm trying to burn one sleep turn because that this might help me in the long run. He goes for knockoff and now I'm pretty sure uh, he's going to switch out because he pretty much did everything with Tangrove that he could against my Zapdos. He, I don't think he can do anything more. So I think he will use this opportunity to bring in his Tyranitar or Mamoswine to set up the Stealth Rocks. So... Switching into Medicham is a really good play in my opinion. Because I don't, really don't think he's gonna stay in. Uh, he has nothing anymore that can really hurt my Zapdos. So we're switching out, we're bringing in Medicham and let's see what Don will do. He does switch out and he goes into his Mamoswine. So I think this Mamoswine is his Stealth Rocker. And I'm actually not afraid to go for the speed tie here. I have 31 IVs in speed. And I do have my Clefable and Suicune in the back. So he might not go for Earthquake. Predicting me to switch out. And even still, I still have the chance to win the speed tie. And perhaps he's not even Jolly Nature. He might also be adamant. Because he's running... He could perhaps be running a Jolly Guard, uh, guard Jump. So... Then he probably needs a wall breaker like an adamant Mamoswine that works really well as a life uh, as a wall breaker. So I, I'm really curious what he will do. He switches out into Tangrove and look at how much this Tangrove will take. Look at that. That's definitely a 2 hit KO. But I actually want to call care because if Drain Punch knocks uh, Tangrove out, then I will be going for Drain Punch. Hmm. Rain Punch does about 40%. That might not be enough to knock him out. I think I'm just gonna go for the high jump kick. Because there's also a chance that he might switch out. Because Tangrove still has the regenerator ability. And he still has a Starmie. So perhaps he will go into Starmie. Because if he goes into anything else, that thing will die. He does go into Starmie. And let's see how much this de uh, will do to the Starmie. 209 so this kind of tells me it's an offensive star because he, uh, he's not running uh, any speed uh, EVs and we don't see leftovers so pretty sure it's an offensive star me and I don't think he's in a position to over predict here so probably something like hydro pump is coming out or even Psy shock so I think going into Suicune is really fu really nice here Okay, he goes into Scald. And we do not see Life Orb, but that did way too, too little to be choice packs. So I don't 
I don't think it's choice packs. We don't see life orb. We don't see leftovers. So I don't know what kind of set this is, guys. Um, I do want to go into Clefable though, in, the, in case he does have the Thunderbolt. Guys, we're just gonna scout if he has Thunderbolt. I do not want to take that damage on Suicune. And if he has Thunderbolt, he has to use it right now. He does have T-Bolt. And uh, yeah, that's definitely analytic damage. But yeah, I'm just gonna go... For the wish right now. <laughs> and let's see what he will do. He doesn't really have anything to break my Clefable. So perhaps he, he has a Adamant Mammoth Swine to break Clefables. Because if it's Jolly Mammoth Swine, then he really have, has a hard time to um, to battle against Clefables. Because then he has to rely on hit, um, getting flinches with Icicle Crashes. But yeah, I'm gonna protect here because Scald might knock me out. And then I will basically get at full HP. Or close to full HP after the leftovers. <clears throat> I could protect here. But... I'm just gonna go for Moonblast. As he does go for Scald, it doesn't burn me. And we knock out the Starmie. So this is really nice for us. Because we took out the first Pokemon. And we are really ahead right now. Let's see what he tries to bring in to break this Clefable. I think the only thing that he can really bring in is his Mammoth Swine. But he cannot go for the Icicle Crash because I do have the Suicune. And... <coughs> I don't think he will bring in his... Oh, I don't think he will go for Stealth Rocks with Mammoth Swine. Because if I do bring in the Suicune on his Stealth Rocks, then he's even further behind. Because he doesn't have a real switch in for the Scald anymore. Because his, his Tangrove is poisoned. My Zapdos is asleep, so he cannot press Sleep Powder. So I can pretty much spam Calm Mind on his Tangrove. I think he has to go for Earthquake. Because if, if he doesn't go for Earthquake, well, I'll bring in Suicune, then Suicune will sweep his team. So uh, I'm pretty sure Earthquake is coming out. So I can go for the Protect. I will bring in my Suicune eventually, but I need the extra recovery on my Clefable because my Clefable is so important against his Garchomp. And I really don't see him pressing Stealth Rocks right now. Against a bad player, I would have probably brought in my Suicune. But Don should know if he presses Stealth Rocks while I'll bring a Suicune, he might he will probably lose the game right there because he lost his Starmie. So I'm just gonna go for the protect. I'm gonna stand by my play. Let's see what he does. He does go for the earthquake. And that is really nice. So we got some extra recovery that will help us against the Garchomp. But now we are going to bring in our Suicune. Because we cannot afford uh, getting hit by this Earthquake. If it's Adamant Mamoswine. Guys, Adamant Life or Mamoswine will definitely do hit KO Clefable. Especially at that amount of health. I'm bringing in my Suicune. And let's see. 138. 138. And we do not see Life Orb. What? I'm, just, I'm gonna press Scald. But... We don't see Life Orb. So I think it's actually... Adamant. Because if it was... If it was Earth Blade Jolly, it would have still done more damage. If it was Jolly, it would have done less damage than that. It has to be Adamant. And I think he has Leftovers or something. I don't think he has a damage item. But yeah, if it is Jolly, then he shouldn't be able to knock me out even with a crit. As he does crit me and knock me out. <laughs> okay, at least we confirmed that this Mammoth Spine is adamant. <laughs> so I can bring in my Medicham. And I know that I will win the speed tie because he knocked out my... Um, my Suicune right there. 
because yeah i know i'm faster here so he has to sack something i am gonna press drain punch though because if he brings in tang rove i can press high jump kick after as he does stay in with the mammoth swine mammoth swine goes down and i think this is a stealth rocker because he brought it in against the Zapdos when it was asleep. But yeah, now he can bring in his guard jump and I think I can live. Live an earthquake if he's not a uh, life orbed. But I do not want to take that risk and my guard jump can still be important or, or my medi champ can still be important against the Tyranitar. So what I'm actually gonna do here is I'm gonna go into Zapdos. Because I don't think he will go for Dragon Claw. Because e even a life orb Dragon Claw won't uh, knock me out. And I still have Clefable in the back, so... I really don't think he's gonna press Dragon Claw. And because my Zapdos is asleep, he's more likely to press Earthquake. Because he might doesn't see it as a threat. But remember... Uh, we burned one sleep turn. So we might wake up on the next attack. And that was actually really important that we did that. So I really think bringing in Zapdos right now is the best play. Because even if he goes for Dragon Claw, he cannot two hit KO our Zapdos. And if he goes for Sword Stance, um, I still have my Unaware Clefable in the back. And yeah. I can keep cocking this all I want, but I think Zapdos is probably the best play. Let's see what he does. He goes for Earthquake. Okay. Okay. And we're gonna press U-turn now. Even if we don't wake up, it's still fine. Uh, he cannot do it, KOS. And if he Swords Dances, like I said, we do have our Clefable in the back. So whatever he does, I think we're still fine. If Even if we don't wake up right there. But because we did burn one Sleep Turn, I, there's a high chance we do wake up. As we do woke up. And we go for the U-turn on his Earthquake. And we get to bring in our Clefable for free. And this was actually the best outcome for us. Because now I can press a Wish. He will most likely switch out there. I don't think he wants to tank a Moonblast. It won't knock him out. Because it only does about 70% I think. Clo and... If he earthquakes on my Moonblast, that could be really bad because then my Clefable is basically dead. So going for Wish uh, right now is probably the best play. And I think he will switch out as he does bring in his Tyranitar. And this is really great because now I can use this opportunity to bring in my Medicham and get that 1v1 situation with the Renatar. Because he cannot knock me out with Stone Edge because that attack is resisted. My Medicham will live a crunch. And any other, other attack is not stabbed. So my Medicham will live that. And it will all be healed back with the Wish. So let's see what he does. He actually goes for Toxic, okay? And I'm completely fine by that. Because now I get to press Drain Punch on his team. And the reason I'm not pressing High Jump Kick is because he could be bringing in his Guard Jump. Trying to dodge my High Jump Kick with the Sand File. And then that would actually be really bad. But if I would just press Drain Punch, there's basically no drawback for me. Drain Punch still hits his whole team really well. If Tyranitar stays in, Tyranitar will 100% die. And any other Pokemon will take a lot of damage. And Tyranitar cannot be Scarfed. And even if he was Scarfed... <laughs> I, I know he cannot be Scarfed. But even if he was Scarfed, he went for Toxic. So he would have been Toxic locked. So there's no way his Tyranitar would be faster than my Medicham. So let's see what he decides to do right now. Something will take a lot of damage at least. Okay, he switches out into his Raikou. And guys, that is not a counter. <laughs> Look at that. Look at that. He almost dies to my Drain Punch. 
<laughs> That's so crazy, man. Yeah, um, I do not want to stay in though because I still think uh, that my Medicham is really important if I can get that 1v1 situation with the Renatar. So he will probably go for Volt Switch, but I don't think I want to sack my Garchomp to a potential Hidden Power Ice. Because still, he has the Tyranitar, so both Garchomp and Medicham can be important against the Tyranitar. So a mid count, a good mid ground play would be to go into Zapdos, since Zapdos will live any attack as he goes for Fold Switch, and that is definitely uh, choice specs damage. So that is really nice to know. Okay, he's gonna bring in his Tyranitar. I think if he brought in his uh, his Garchomp, he could have pressed Dragon Claw, but I would have still had the Clefable. But I'm gonna Roost now. I know that I'm faster. And if he Stone Edges, it won't be super effective because of the Roost, as he actually went for Toxic. And this is actually really great for me because he cannot uh, use Sleep Powder with Tangrove on my Zapdos anymore, as he does bring in his uh, his Tangrowth on my Toxic. But now I'm just gonna go for the Roost. And let's see what he will do. Okay, the Roost comes off. <clears throat> As he goes for Hidden Power. And because I Roosted, I don't know if it's Hidden Power, Ice or Fire. Um, It will probably be Fire because his two team will otherwise lose to Scizor. Or Scissor will be very strong against his team. So I think it's Hidden Power Fire. I don't think he needs Hidden Power Ice. Now he switches out and I used U-turn. So this is really great because now I get to bring in my Medicham. And Medicham will definitely claim a kill right now. Because his Raikou won't be able to switch in anymore without dying. And again, we do not want to miss a high jump kick, so we're gonna go for the Drain Punch. And Drain Punch will definitely knock out the Renatar if it stays in. I don't know if Don is the kind of player that <laughs> wants to try to make a crazy play and going into car jump, touching my attack <laughs> with the Sandfall. But no, he stays in. <laughs> Triple Berry activate, but that do doesn't matter. Because the Sandstorm doesn't boost Tyranitar's physical defense. It only boosts his uh, special defense. And now he can bring in his Garchomp. And at this point, I think I can sack my Medicham. Because Garchomp is faster, Raikou is faster, and I do need to connect the High Jump Kick on uh, Tangrowth to beat it uh, with Medicham. So. I don't think I need Medicham. My other Pokemon can take care of his three remaining Pokemon, I think. And who knows, perhaps he might go for um, for the Sword Stance here. So perhaps I can get off a big hit. Cause, but I could also... Pre I'm pretty sure he will go for Earthquake. Because I have Clefable. And I can predict the Earthquake with my Zapdos. But if I go Zapdos on his Earthquake, uh, it's still a mind game. Because he can... Sword Dance, he can Dragon Claw, or he can Earthquake. Because my Clefable is not at full, full HP, so he cannot take two Earthquakes. And if I just sack my Medicham right there, it won't be a mind game anymore. Because I can safely bring in my Clefable, and Garchomp can't do anything against my Clefable. So I really think sacking Medicham is the play, as he does go for the Earthquake. So now I can bring in my Clefable. And I'm just gonna go for the Wish here. Because I do not knock him out with the Moonblast there. And if he Earthquakes me, then my Clefable is basically dead because he is faster. So he can 2-hit KO me basically. That's why I'm going for the Wish here. Let's see what he actually does. He goes for Earthquake and that did 199. Guys, that is more than half of my HP and he didn't lose life or health. So I think it's Earthblade. 
but if it's Julie nature that was a max roll and if it was adamant nature then it was a normal roll so I'm kind of going to watch him being adamant but running both adamant memo and adamant guard jump is not that great in my opinion I think so I think it's, it's a jolly nature and he just got a high roll that has to be it but he's definitely using an earth plate because there's no way that earthquake should have done that much damage to me uh, without a life orb because Joyce Bent is not in the game so we can uh, <laughs> we can rule that off Anyway, he brings in his um, his Tangrove on my Protect. That's fine because my Protect failed. I can use Protect again. And he went for Sleep Powder. So I ex get extra recovery. And he gets a turn of Poison Damage. So the next turn will do even more damage to him. And I can basically bring in my Zapdos and press uh, Roost. I don't think he will go for Sleep Powder though. Because he has to be expecting my Zapdos to come in. So what will he do? Yeah, Clefable is actually a real problem for Dawn's team. He goes for Giga Drain. So that was again the best outcome for me. But even knockoff wouldn't have done anything to me because I don't have an item. So we're just gonna roost here. As he goes for sleep powder again, predicting me to U-turn. And because I have enough health, I can just go for the discharge in case he does want to go for the sleep powder again. Okay, he stays in. Let's see. Okay, he did go for the Sleep Powder. So the game is going really well for us. And he will die on the next turn. So he's most likely going to switch. And we can use this opportunity to go for the U-turn. As he goes into Guard Jump. And again, we can bring in our Clefable safely. And I think I'm just gonna go um, for the protect here, just to be extra safe. Because we are this far ahead, we uh, playing safe is probably the best play. In case he does get a crit with earthquake or something. Because I don't think uh, my moonblast will kill him from here yet. And he's not really letting me get damage off on this guard jump. I just need some more damage off on this guard jump to knock him out with the Moonblast. Because Moonblast does around 70% against uh, a regular guard jump. He does bring in his Raikou. I can protect again here to see what he does because he's definitely choice packs. But I actually want to go into guard jump. If he goes for hidden power ice, I can bring in my Tyranitar. I press, um, press Stealth Rock, and if he goes for anything else, Garchomp basically gets a kill. He does go for Hidden Power Eyes, so nice play on his part. But now I can bring in my Tyranitar. Because uh, I don't think I need my Garchomp. Uh, because it doesn't beat the Stangrove, and it might have to speed die with the, guard, with the other Garchomp, which I don't like in that situation. Yeah, now we're gonna go for the Stealth Rock. We don't need to go for the Pursuit. Because if we press Stealth Rocks, he has nothing to remove it. And Raikou will basically be dead. As he brings in his Guard Jump. And now... Um, now it's actually a mind game. In hindsight, I should have actually went for the Protect on Clefable against, um, against the Raikou. Because I could have seen what he did. And if he went... Went for Hidden Power Ice like that, I could have brought in... Oh, I could have actually stayed in and pressed Moonblast. If he went for Shadow Ball, I could have stayed in. 
if he went for Volt Switch, I could have brought in my Garchomp. So that was definitely a misplay on my part, but I think was still fine. Because every because I can just bring in my Zepdos here. And there's a very low chance that he will go for the Dragon Claw because my Clefable is basically at full HP. So I think he's going for Earthquake and uh, he might be fearing something like Ice Beam from my Tyranitar too. So, because Dra Dragon Claw is not knocking out Tyranitar. And he is not, he is not Life Orbed. So I don't think he will knock out my Tyranitar. So I'm just going to go into Zapdos. And Earthquake is his most likely play. As he does go for Earthquake. And at this point I'm just going to Roost actually. In case he does switch out. And if he Sword Stance it's still fine. Because he cannot knock me out at plus 2. With Dragon Claw. Without a Life Orb. So I think Roosting up here is probably the best play. Yeah, what can he do against me? I've only seen Earthquake from this Garchomp though. I haven't seen another move. Okay, he switches out. Into his Tangrowth. And this is really nice. Because now, <laughs> I'm basically at full HP. And what I'm actually gonna do here. Is I'm gonna stay in. And press uh, Discharge as he decides to sack uh, the Raikou. So Raikou is down. I remember um, his card jump will take Stout Rock's damage when it comes in. So every time he switches in, it will be easier for my Clefable to knock it out with the Moonblast. And that's actually why I went. For the, the guard jump switch instead of going for the protect on the Raikou previously. Because I really wanted those stealth rocks up. Because look, now his guard jump switches in. He takes the stealth rocks damage. And I'm basically gonna roost there. Because after the poison damage, um he can still not knock me out with Sword Stance. Uh, with two plus 2 Dragon Claw if he Sword Stances right now. And that way I can U-turn into my Clefable. All I basically need right now is to get in my Clefable for free against this Garchomp. And ideally I want to do it without one of my Pokemon dying. So he went for Sword Stance and I'm pretty sure I can live this Dragon Claw because he doesn't have a Life Orb. Let's go for Dragon Claw. I do live this attack and I get off the U-turn and from this amount of health I can definitely take out this uh, Garchomp with the Moonblast. And if he switches into his Tangrowth, uh, Tangrowth will be 2 hit KO'd uh, because my Clefable is faster than his Tangrowth. And Garchomp cannot knock my Clefable out. Uh, even with a crit from Earthquake. Or even a crit from Poison Jab. So I think this is GG. This has to be the game. Uh, good thing I got most predictions right in this game. Jared Don. He played pretty well. Played pretty well. <clears throat> but yeah, let's see what he does. I think this game is over. But we're not gonna call it. Too early. He switches out into a Stangrove, and like I said, this Stangrove will Stangrove will be to it KO. I can be a huge dick right now and press protect, <laughs> but no, I'm just gonna press Moonblast. Uh, we're just gonna play this game out, and like I said, we we are we are tryharding right now, so we're not gonna fool around with, with a protect and him ris risking him using synthesis or something. <laughs> And yeah, all he has left is his guard jump. Guard jump takes another stealth rocks damage. And this will definitely be a kill. So uh GG done. And I guess we're up in the finals. So I do hope I battle will battle Don again though. Cause I really enjoyed this battle. I 
I think it might have been a long battle, but at least it has been a good battle. And I think for the next, for the finals, we're probably up against that stall team, that player that plays six stall Pokemon. But I think we are fine against that team because I do have Septos and Suicune with pressure, so I can PP stall him. And my Clefable has uh, aromatherapy, so he cannot really stall me. And with the Wish, I can keep my Pokemon healthy. So. I don't think I will upload that game though, because that will definitely take a lot of turns and that will be so boring. So we can consider this one as the finals actually. Yo guys, welcome to the end of the video. It's always fun to play against players like Don, like Lucifer, like Steve, like Diseku, because uh, those kind of players are very consistent and they always try to make things happen and uh, because they try to make things happen a lot of my games will occur when you play them and mistakes do get punished so that really keeps me sharp and that is why I like to play those guys but yeah what I basically tried to say after the game against Don was that I wasn't afraid of playing against that stall team. I was pretty sure I could have actually won that. And let me explain uh, why. Uh, let's show the teams first. As you can see, Guga, the one I was supposed to play in the finals, uh, for some reason he didn't want to play me. Uh, I don't want to talk about that, but he basically had six full stall months. And that means that he had no damage on his team. It was basically um, just all stall so he pressed toxic on his opponent or pressed uh, will-o-wisp with saber lie on physical attackers and wear them down but I had my cliff fable I had my Suicune and I had my Zepdos and uh, it's nice to poison them but you do need the damage to secure the kills and because Kuga didn't have any damage on them he could have never secured the kills on those three Pokemon because my Clefable had Wish and Aromatherapy so he can he could have basically kept my whole team healthy Suicune had Rest and Roar so he could have kept himself healthy and his team could have never killed my Suicune in two or three turns and, and my Zapdos also had Roost and Toxic so he could have thrown down some toxics on Kuga's team and he could have also pressed Roost to recover himself and yeah Kuga didn't have the damage to kill this Pokemon and the difference between my team and his team is that my team did have the damage to secure those kills because Medicham would have done a lot of damage to his team uh, if I would have ever got rid of Sableye then my Medicham would have just taken over um, same goes for Tyranitar, if I would have ever got rid of his Quagsire then my Tyranitar would have probably taken over the game uh, too and the worst thing Sableye could have done to my Tyranitar was, was pressing knockoff and I didn't need to chop a berry on Tyranitar because Tyranitar didn't need to tank any uh, fighting type attack from Kuga because he didn't have any that I needed to uh, to tank with Tyranitar and yeah, that was basically why I think he couldn't have beaten me uh, but the reason I didn't want to play him was because <laughs> I would have felt bad for you guys because the stream would have probably died a bit out because it would have taken very long to probably kill that Pokemon of his because he had a lot of he used six Pokemon that can keep themselves alive like that would have been very boring and I also think I wouldn't have uploaded that battle because it would have just been too boring and I don't upload that kind of shit and yeah because well, basically what would have happened was that I probably had to PP stall his team because my Suicune and Zapdos do have the ability pressure so I could have easily PP stalled them and Kuga wouldn't have had the damage to kill this Pokemon. So that's why using 6 stall Pokemon could be bad if you cannot stall out certain Pokemon. Because you do need damage to break my team. And that's why I w probably wouldn't have lost. But yeah, if you did like this video, please hit that like button. If you want 
to see more of my videos make sure to subscribe to my channel also click on the notification bell to know when my videos are live for you and i actually want to know i would like to know um do you think i would have won against kuga or do you think i would have lost let me know down in the comments but yeah uh, that was basically it. make sure to also check the video against raven because uh, the giveaway is still going for one day because if you so if you want to know how to enter that giveaway click the video right there against any raven everything will be explained but yeah peace out and I'll see you guys in the next video